Good evening and happy midweek, brothers and sisters. It is a pleasure to start our worship tonight with singing. And before we start our singspiration, let us all bow down our heads and pray first. Let's pray. Our Father which art in heaven, thank you for the gift of music. We would like to ask for the thousands and millions of angels to sing with us tonight. May we be able to give glory to your name through our voices. May thy will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To open our worship, let us sing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, in hymn number 323. Rejoice, ye pure in heart. Hymn number nine. Rejoice, ye pure in heart. Rejoice, give thanks and sing. Your festal banner wave on high, the cross of Christ your King. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. With voice as full and strong as ocean surging praise, and forth the sturdy hymns of old, the psalms of ancient days. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. With all the angel choirs, with all the saints on earth, Pour out the strains of joy and bliss through 
rapture, no blessed mirth. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. Yes, on through life's long path, still chanting as ye go. From youth to age, by night and day, in gladness and in woe. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and sing. Praise Him who reigns on high, the Lord whom we adore, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, one God forevermore. Rejoice, 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 give thanks and to continue our worship, let us all stand and sing Redeemed. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed true His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed. His child and forever I am redeemed and so happy in Jesus no language my rapture can tell I know that the light of his presence with me doth continually dwell redeemed Redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. I know there's a crown that is waiting in yonder bright mansion the Lamb. And soon with the saints made perfect at home with the Lord I shall be redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child and forever. I am. To those who are able to kneel, let's all kneel. Let's pray. Our, our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your goodness and mercy. As we worship you this evening, we ask your holy presence to be with us and open our hearts and minds so that we may be able to comprehend all the lessons that we hear this evening and we can use it in our daily lives. I pray for all the worship leaders. Please give enough knowledge from above so that they can render their service according to your will. And I pray for our discussion for tonight. That will be a blessing to all of us. This is all I pray. In the loving name of Jesus, I is our Savior. Amen.
brothers and sisters, happy midweek! Uh, may I ask my dear brothers and sisters to greet your seatmates or those who are in front of you or at your back a happy midweek. Wow, it's so nice to see familiar and new faces around the campus and here in PIC. So we've been through a lot ever since um, the enrollment process started until now. But let us praise God because we have this time to renew our strength and to revive ourselves from all the events that had happened in the past days. So this pandemic also brought us a lot of losses and pauses, right? But we praise God because we believe that the prayers that we have uttered were heard. That's why we are brought back here inside AUP once again. And now, as you can see, we are um, we can see lots of faces um, here inside our church. And so for tonight, let us tune our hearts in singing spiritual songs and in prayer and in fellowshipping with one another during this um, blessed hour of prayer. And before I take my seat, I would like to invite all of you to open your Bibles to Matthew 18, verse 19. Um, let me read. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Once again, happy midweek, brothers and sisters, and may we receive the blessings from God tonight. Took every step, not knowing what road I'd take. I spent every time living with foolish pride. And then you came to me, telling me that I'm a child of your love. Give me. Calvary from your hand to set me free. Lord, heal me with your love. And day after day, you let me your love and night after night in your arms I'll abide I thank you Lord for love you have put it right into my heart give me love peace joy and understanding 
Happy midweek, brothers and sisters. Happy midweek. Ah, uh, it's still not that loud. I still need to hear your voices once again. Happy midweek. Happy midweek. Nice. Thank you. You know, actually, we missed this because we have been we had been uh, doing midweeks for I don't know, like two years now, and. I mean, starting the pandemic, and I'm happy that I can see you, brothers and sisters here, here in PIC. And so, thank you, Lord, for, you know, face-to-faces now starting, and we are here tonight, not just to show off our clothes, not, not just to, you know, sit there, but we are here to worship God, and so thank you, Lord, right? And for tonight, actually, I'm not going to speak. I'm just going to introduce to you the topic of our discussion. So I will not be, sit, uh, I will not be standing here for, for long. I will just introduce to you our topic, and it is about responsibility. Yeah, we should. I, I'm going to start right away because... We're going to save some time for our discussion. Okay, so responsibility. We have different kinds of responsibility as a student, as a brother, as a sister, and as a follower of Christ, right? And I don't know about you, but we have different kinds of uh, responsibilities personally, like individually. Okay, so we're going to Although we have different kinds of responsibilities, we're going to talk about a specific kind of responsibility tonight, okay? So I hope you are ready to, you know, absorb, absorb uh, the things that we're going to talk about tonight. Okay, it's about responsibility towards developing your talents, a very familiar topic. And let me just ask you, who among you here, guys, has a talent? Please don't, sh- don't be shy to raise your hand. Please. <laughs> okay, I can see one. Oh, maybe my eyes is not that clear now. Okay. My brothers and sisters here don't have... Talents, okay. But still, we're going to talk about this. How are we going to develop or how should we encourage ourselves and our brothers to develop the talents that they have? So, let's see. Let's open our Bibles. If you accidentally brought your Bibles with you, please open that. In Matthew 25, verse 29, that's our uh, memory verse for tonight. Let's read. Matthew 25, verse 29. Please, open your Bibles, please. It says here, For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what, who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. So we're going to see what's the meaning of that verse. And we're going to, we're going to uh, get it from the book of Ellen White, actually, from Christ Object Lesson, page 356. So I'll just, I'll just make it short. I hope I can make it short. Okay. So let's see what she says in Christ Object Lessons about talents. Okay. I hope you're listening because <laughs> this is very important. Okay. Talents. Talents used are talents multiplied. Do you believe that? Yes? No? Please, church, encourage me, please. Do you believe that? Yes or no? Yes, that's your opinion. If that's your opinion, that's correct. If no, then okay, that's your opinion. Talents used are talents multiplied. Okay? Success is not a result of a chance or of destiny. So, if you're doing anything, like, for you to be successful, it's not a result of a chance or of destiny. And I think we know that. 
It is the outworking of God's own providence. The reward of faith and discretion, of virtue and persevering effort. Okay, so if we have talent, some of you might just born with it, but some are, you know, they, are, they have this effort to have a talent or skill, okay? The Lord desires us to use every gift we have. Every gift, every talent that we have, if you can sing, then sing for the Lord. If you can speak and, you know, preach the Word of God, then do it. Because the Lord desires us to use every gift that we have. And if we do this, we shall have greater gifts to use. And then the next slide, it says, He, God, does not supernaturally endow us with qualifications we lack. I hope you can understand. Let me just read it again. He does not supernaturally endow us with qualifications that we lack. But while we use that which we have, He will work with us to increase and strengthen every faculty. So it's a human-divine combination, if you know that, right? It's, uh, it's God and us working together. He will work with us to increase and strengthen every faculty. And the only part that's missing here in this statement is our willingness to be used. Yes, we may have talents, but are we willing to use those talents for the Lord? It says here, every effort made for Christ will react in blessing upon ourselves. If we use our means for His glory, if we use our means only for His glory, He will give us more. I think that's, uh, if it's, if you're doing business with God, I think this is a good deal, right? If we use more of the talents that He gave us, He will give us more. As we seek to win others to Christ, bearing the burden of our souls in our prayers, our own hearts will throb with the quickening influence of God's grace. Our own affections will glow with more divine fervor. Our Christian, our whole Christian life will be more of a reality because some of us, although actually even me, sometimes a Christian life is kind of, you know, I think sometimes because of the things that are happening, like, oh wow, it's like a fantasy. But if we use the things, I mean, the talents that God has given us, we will experience a true Christian life. Okay, it says here, Ellen White says, our whole Christian life will be more of a reality, more earnest. If you know that what happening here is real and you know that your Christian life is true, you will do it in a more earnest way, right? So more, uh, more of a reality, more earnest, and of course, more prayerful. You, can, you cannot do all things just by yourself. We need Christ. Right? Okay, let me just show you a picture here. After this uh, presentation, we're going to talk about Matthew 25 uh, verses, uh, verses 25 verses 14 to 18, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 14 to 18. And as you can see here in the picture, this is the picture of the servant who hid his talent. Now, we're going to talk about, we're going to discuss that after this. What is the importance of investing and using our talents rather than hiding it? Okay? It says here, let me just read it for you. It was the one with the smallest gift who left his talent unimproved. Are you like that? Are we like that? And this is given a warning to all who feel that the smallness of their, of their endowments excuses them from service to Christ. Because we know that, you know, 
Our brothers may have five talents or skills, four, three, but you can just tell to yourself, that I, I, just, I just have one. I, I, I can sing, but other than other talents, I don't have any. But let's just, let me just read it for you. It says here, If they could do some great thing, how gladly would they undertake it? But because they can only serve in little things, just because you can sing and that's the only thing that you can do, they think themselves justified in doing nothing. I don't even know how to pray, so maybe I'll just sit here for today. Brothers and sisters, the talents that we have right now, and I know you know this, but let me just remind you, let God remind you tonight that those talents that you have right now are very important in God's work. If you're forgetting it, and of course I'm forgetting it most of the time as well, but let me just remind each one of us tonight. Let us develop the talents that God has given to us. And then in the last part, the last sentence, she says, in this they err. If you think that you don't want to work for Christ and use your talent just because you don't have any and just because you just have one talent, and then you're, mist you're mistaken. You are wrong, says Ellen White. It says here, only by faithfulness in the little things. If you have your Bible, let me just, let's open that in Daniel 1 verse 17. Let's read Daniel 1 verse 17. Brothers and sisters, please open your Bible in Daniel 1 verse 17. And let me just read it for you. Okay? It says here, as for these four young men. Who are we, who are we talking about here? Let me just read. Are for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Ellen White says, only by faithfulness in the little things. If you are not faithful in the little things, I think we are not faithful in much. Only by faithfulness in the, in the little things can the soul be trained to act with fidelity under larger responsibilities. God brought Daniel and his fellows into connection with the great men of Babylon, that these heathen men might become acquainted with the principles of the true religion. In the midst of a nation of idolaters, Daniel was to represent the character of God. Aren't we the same? <laughs> to represent God, to represent the character of Christ towards our brothers and sisters and to those who have not yet known Christ. So I think using our talents for God is important. And Ellen White says here, it was his faithfulness. It was Daniel's faithfulness in the little things that gave complexion to his whole life. He honored God in the smallest duties, and the Lord cooperated with him. Brothers and sisters, tonight, before we start our discussion, I've, I, I've prepared some uh, questions for you tonight, but What are our responsibilities? Yes, just like what I've said earlier, we have different kinds of responsibilities as a student, as a son, as a daughter, as a brother and a sister. But let me just say one thing. Let us remember that there is a God who, who is always willing to accept us in 
It is, he's always waiting for us to do things for Him and with Him. Because when we do things, we are not alone. We are with Christ. And Jesus Christ is always with us. So for tonight, I hope you get some uh, important, you know, important bits of blessing from God. And let me just... Uh, let me just read it to you. Let me just project the questions that we, I've prepared for you tonight. So we're going to have our discussion. And if you brought your friends with you, just ask them these questions and answer and talk with them. You can do it by bench or you can just do it by twos with your sitmate. So thank you, brothers and sisters, for listening. Happy midweek. And God bless us all.